Hi everyone, I'm Kirsten from the Mass Realty Communications team here to talk with Susan Ashbrook about the Gibson House Museum, which is in the Back Bay neighborhood of Boston. We want to talk a little bit about the museum uh, as both a place to visit and a really important cultural significance as the museum itself, uh, something to do in the community and as a really interesting landmark as well. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Susan. Could you go ahead and introduce yourself for us a little bit? Uh, good morning or good day. I don't know what time of day it is when you're watching this. Um, my name is Susan Ashbrook and I am um, a longtime resident of this neighborhood, the Back Bay. I'm also a longtime board member um, of the Gibson House Museum. I am recently retired um, as an art history professor at Lesley University um, in Cambridge. Great, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations on your retirement as well. It must Thanks. be nice to take a break after working so hard so long. <laughs> yeah. All right, so if you don't mind then, uh, it's great to get a professor's expect, uh, perspective here. Just in general, why are history museums and history such an important part of a community in general? Well, I mean, I think uh, we all, want to know um, about where we came from, where where we live came from. Um, Boston, of course, is very rich in history as one of the earliest parts of the country to be settled and as the, you know, one of the birthplaces of the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, the neighborhood I'm in is very definitely um, 19th century for the reasons that I will explain uh, if you want me to now or we can get to it. But I think um, we're all becoming more aware of history um, at this time, um, particularly, uh, you know, it's a, a time of sort of cultural awakening um, mm -hmm. in many respects. So, um, but it's very important um, in this neighborhood, um, particularly. Um, and well, do you want me to go ahead now and explain? Yeah, about for sure. Neighborhood? Let's talk a little bit about the neighborhood and what and the in general, and then we'll get into the museum after. So the Back Bay is actually the result of a, a massive public works project during, um, shortly be, uh, begun shortly before the Civil War, and um, which uh, so this was a swampy, marshy, stinky area because um, uh, you know sewage went into it. It was very unhealthy area um, mm. and um, so it was decided to fill it and create a um, you know, new part of the city as the city was growing um, in the 19th century it was growing enormously and so it was a, a long process to um, to actually you know fill it and create this neighborhood but so the entire neighborhood is um, mid 19th century and and later but it is it was landmarked as it is preserved as a neighborhood um, uh, that began um, in I think the 1960s, and so um, it is very much protected. So the um, there can be no uh, changes to the exteriors of the row houses, um, brownstone and brick row houses that make up this neighborhood, um, mm -hmm. without going through a, a process which is quite rigorous of getting approval. Um, so it is a very much a historic neighborhood and it's one of the earlier ones in the country, I think, to be protected like that. The Gibson House is important because, um, so the, uh, it was built, it was one of the earliest houses built um, in, you know, after the landfill project was more or less completed. Okay. And so it was begun in 1859 and occupied in 1860. Um, and so it was very typical row house of its time, um, lived in by an upper middle class family, not particularly notable family, but, uh, you know, a well connected, prosperous family. Um, it's important now because it is the only house that has survived completely intact, never owned outside of the family. It was owned by three generations of the family, um, you know, from 1860 until the 1950s. Mm -hmm. um, the last person who lived there, the grandson of the person who built it initially, um, left it uh, as a museum at a time that Victorian was ex was not was considered, you know, ugly, not worth saving. 
Mm -hmm. And um, he, for his own reasons, both personal and sort of, um, you know, uh, because of history, really felt it was important to save it. Um, and uh, this neighborhood has continued to be a popular neighborhood, or at least it has become again. And there've been many, many, you know, changes to the buildings on the inside and on the outside in some instances, but they have been, um, you know, modernized, broken up, of course, into condos and apartments. Mm -hmm. And um, and ch so therefore, um, you know, th they're not the way they were. But the Gibson House is a very pure record of a way of life by, you know, a segment of Boston society, a prosperous segment, um, you know, for a century. Um, right. And it really is the only document, um, uh, you know, sort of pure document. And it's also rare in the whole country, not only in Boston, but in the whole country for something to be saved um, at that level. So, um, so that's its importance. So, right. So on, that's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. the family, the family part then probably had a lot to do with that, that they, they passed it on and, and saved it. But that's really, uh, I'm sure the grandson didn't quite realize the impact that he'd be having down the road that saving it would be one of the last No, places. he didn't, but he had some idea of it. And um, right. he, so what had happened sort of in the, the last years before his death is that the neighborhood had become much less desirable because mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of reasons, um, one, and this is true across the country, one was that um, by then motor cars, by the 1940s and 50s, motor cars, you know, were, were a way of life and people moved out to the suburbs where they could get more space mm -hmm. and be able to get into the city easily. Um, but also they couldn't get servants anymore because uh. the, the servants in the 19th century were mostly Irish. Um, and we are doing research to find out as much as we can about the servants. Um, but they were often, you know, Irish, freshly immigrated from Ireland. Mm -hmm. And then sort of during the um, during the earlier 20th century and certainly during the Second World War, um, many of those people went to work in factories or, of course, joined, uh, you know, the, the army um, and uh, and, you know, didn't want to go on in domestic service uh, because they could actually do very much better uh, right. in other um, in other jobs. And so, um, and a house like like the Gibson house, which is, you know, five stories walk up, um, really needed servants at that time to operate. Right. Um, and so, um, and so the whole way of life kind of um, ended. And um, the, uh, uh, so the neighborhood, it didn't, you know, some neighborhoods like this in the country got sort of torn down and new buildings were put up. Um, that didn't happen right away. A lot of institutions bought, bought up. Um, so there were colleges, bought the buildings cheap. Um, there were several colleges around that owned the buildings uh, or did, and um, or they became sort of rooming houses. Um, but the, the, at least the exterior survived. And then, mm -hmm. um, and then there was a threat to actually replace a lot of those row houses with big apartment buildings and a couple of them did get built but that sort of galvanized um, people who were still living here to say no wait a second we want to save this and so that's when the process was begun to actually you know protect the neighborhood and now of course it's very desirable i mean for and even some of the houses are being put back to single family houses um, but, you know, with modernization and technology, which replaces, of course, the servants. Right. But, but it is now an extremely desirable neighborhood, um, you know, with condominiums and single family houses. So it's gone back in a way to what it was. And I'm, I have to say, regrettably, it's, it's rather homogeneous. Hmm. You know, I mean, I think it is a white privileged neighborhood, which is, you know, regrettable, but... Um, but that is kind of the way it is right now on the whole. But it is, um, it's a lovely place to live. It really okay. is very beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's very, it's, it's very beautiful. And I think, you know, in the time where you were saying the neighborhood was less desirable, the Victorian sort of look wasn't really in style, but now right. we realize that how gorgeous it was in this, the effort into this architecture and people want to preserve that kind of thing and, and live in that neighborhood. It's very, as I said, again, romantic and quite, quite interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of trees, 
and this very active garden club here, which really mm. uh, pays attention, uh, it's especially um, works with uh, with the city to um, plant and um, look after trees. So that's a, a big focus here. Right. Yeah. The the nature aspect of that is so important as well. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Well, thank you for letting us know about the neighborhood. That helps a lot. Um, put everything kind of into context mm -hmm. for the house. Um, yeah. So in terms of the museum today, what is your main mission then in regards to what they're doing and having tours, being involved in the community? Well, of course, right now we're, you know, we're not open and we hope to yeah. open again in the next few months on a limited basis. Uh, we have done online programs, but we're, we've um, got a, a fairly new young curator who's very interested in, in research about um, uh, the house and its place in the culture of Boston, Boston history and beyond. She's uh, actually had a grant to do research on um, the servants and the whole, uh, you know, to find out as much as we can, both about the specific servants, but also just the way of life of servants. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been an important part. It's really enriched our understanding of all the occupants of the house, not just, the, you know, the family. Um, another uh, aspect um, actually is deals with um, LGBTQT um, issues. Okay. Um, the the um, uh, grandson who left the house as a museum um, was gay. We, you know, uh, can be pretty sure of that now. I mean, there was we thought that for a long time, but I think it's been pretty much uh, conclusively decided that he was. Okay. Um, and um, and actually, he is one of a number of gay men of that period who were sort of saving um, historic houses. It was mm -hmm. a sort of a trend. He himself was. Um, uh, involved in landscape design, but also um, uh, was a poet and writer and, and, you know, had sort of independent means, I think, from the family's wealth. So it was he who um, who left it, I think, with the opposition of the other members of his family, um, mm -hmm. who thought this was kind of a crackpot idea. Um, and he was able to leave so, uh, some money with it so that, you know, the house sort of functioned on a very limited museum basis until more recently where it's become higher profile and we've got mm -hmm. a very, you know, active board. We're trying to be better known in, in the neighborhood and because we, um, I, we're not as well known as we should be, even though we're right smack in the middle of the neighborhood because we, uh, the restrictions it being a historic neighborhood means we can't do big signs saying, you know, here we are, which is sort right. of one of the houses on the street with a discreet little sign out front. Um, and we don't have a big budget for advertising or anything like that. So we use social media um, to, get our, um, to get our name out there. And we are garnering more attention. We've been, oh, I know something important to um, note is that we were um, the site of quite a few scenes in the film of Little Women. Oh, um, okay. You know, so uh, Greta Gerwig was, you know, in the house and uh, Saoirse Ronan. And um, so they're quite, it was used actually um, as Joe's New York boarding house uh, early okay. in the film. So, so that of course helped though. Unfortunately, we were just sort of, we had really ramped up our publicity about that. And then the pandemic hit and we had to close. Uh, so of course, really yeah, it's, it's made it difficult for everybody. Well. Mm -hmm. But um, but so um, I think we're, uh, we're, you know, trying to raise our profile, I'm trying to raise more money because um, even though we, you know, will never be a high budget operation, we could certainly use um, use more funds, um, right. just preserving the house, you know, fixing things is expensive. But mm -hmm. I think we're trying to um, really take advantage of, well, um, all the documents, all the things that are in the house, because it was left, you know, sort of fully furnished, but also with drawers full of letters, closets full of clothes, mm -hmm. all sorts of things. Um, so that, you know, do research around all of that and, and learn everything that, that we can about, about um, the house and its place in, in Boston history. So, um, mm -hmm. but those, um, the servants and the, you know, the, the gay, side of it, I think, uh, and also increasing our audience mm -hmm. um, very much. Um, 
we actually participated in Pride Month events in previous years, did programs around that. Um, so, you know, we're really trying to seem not just like a stuffy, you know, Brahmin <laughs> place, but something that's really relevant right. um, in today's world. So. Well, I think that's so important that um, not only your organization is, is preserving this history, but digging deeper and trying to find new things exactly. and involve the community. And yeah, these discoveries about the gay community being so involved in the preservation of Boston is really interesting. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and trying to find out about these these groups too that were, were maybe taken advantage of in these servant groups and, and try to just understand how it all functioned back then. So I think that's really important that we need to not only preserve history, but figure out more about it. So that's that's great that you guys are working on that. That's really, really exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so just what is your, what's your personal favorite part of the museum or something that people really like to see when they come there? Um, but one of the highlights um, to me is the beautiful wallpaper that runs in the, uh, in the entryway, the front hall, up the stairs to the second floor. It's a, and you can see it on our website. Um, it's uh, an embossed, it's meant to look like leather. It's known as Japanese leather, but it's actually very heavy paper that's embossed and gilded. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very rich looking. Um, and it's actually a motif that we've um, used a lot. It's um, uh, our Facebook, um, profile picture is, is a detail of that, but also we've just recently started um, partnering with an outfit called Red Bubble, which retails, um, uh, music, you know, um, t-shirts and mugs and that sort of thing right. um, with branded merchandise. And some of it uses the, a detail of that wallpaper too for face masks and mugs. Uh, it's beautiful. And that's one of my favorite things. But then the the upstairs study that um, was Charles Gibson's, well, it was his father's bedroom, but then it was his own private sort of hideaway um, mm -hmm. when he was alone in the museum in its last year, his last years there. And it's full of curios, knickknacks, things that interested him. It's just a, such a, a rich, rather cluttered um, environment, but it's, there's just, there's so much in the house. It's, it's absolutely, you know, fascinating. Right, it's not even just a preserved museum, just a, a snapshot in time, which I think is well, really- Well, it is, really it is, mm -hmm. of a century. And you know, it changed over the hundred years or almost hundred years that the family was there. There was, but not a lot. I mean, they, uh, the um, daughter-in-law of the, of the woman who, the widow who built it, um, had it built um, in the 1890s, updated the uh, wallpaper, um, in some of the rooms and redecorated but basically it stayed pretty much the same mm -hmm. the dining room uh stayed the same from the time that you know they first used it in the 1860s until now you know it's wow. completely as far as we know unchanged um you know the bostonians were not ones to be you know going with every whim <laughs> Uh, they liked they liked things you know uh, to stay the way they had been and uh, sort right. of amusingly conservative kind of uh, right. we know how we like it and we want it to stay that way <laughs> right and if you read the novels of Edith Wharton or um uh you know Henry James you sort of get that you get that sense it's very much from that era right well that kind of stubbornness at least has given us this beautiful well-preserved well, right. uh <laughs> museum exactly. at the end of the exactly. day excellent mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think that's a really good overview uh, for anybody and then just gives you a little bit of a, a taster so that people are more intrigued to go. Um, definitely, it's a little bit of a hidden gem uh, that hopefully more and more people yeah. start discovering and that um, your organization will, once, of course, things are a little bit more normalized and, and we can move around a little bit more normally, then we can get some more more visitors that way. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that I that you wanted to mention that maybe I didn't ask that I should have, or do we think we're okay for that? Um, I can't think of anything. Just you know, please come and see the Gibson House Museum. We are in all the guidebooks. Actually, we often have more uh, visitors from far away or overseas than we do local. You know, right? Um, yeah. So uh, you know, check out our website and um, have a Facebook and uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, we look forward to welcoming people back into the museum in, uh, you know, in not too uh, distant time from here. 
right. Yeah, we'll be linking uh, the website down in the in the description of the video, so you can go check that out. And hopefully, I think now at least we'll see a little bit more domestic tourism in the next little while. So maybe we'll get yes. some more people uh, exploring their backyard a little bit more. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, Susan. That was really lovely. Uh, I learned a lot and I think that people are definitely really going to be intrigued to go check out this museum. That is such an important part of the community in preserving that that history. Um, so if anybody who's watching this would like to have an interview with us to talk about your neighborhood, park, your museum, establishment, do just check out the link in the description there and we will go ahead and get in touch. And until next time, thank you. Thank you.